In this video, we are going to take a look at how motion happens. Um, and so, several of you um, have said things that would indicate you don't really understand Newton's third law. And so, the goal of this problem is to understand how the second law and the third law fit together. So here is Newton's dilemma. It was not actually a dilemma for Newton. It's a dilemma for people who do not understand Newton. So here's the problem. A cart is attached to a horse, and the horse pulls forward with a certain amount of force. And because of Newton's third law, the horse pulls back on the cart. So we have um, in our schema, we have the cart and the horse are interacting with each other. The horse is pulling forward on the cart, and the cart is pulling backward on the horse. And we know, according to Newton's third law, that these two have to be equal. So, if the cart and the horse pull against each other with equal amounts of force, then the forces are balanced, and the cart cannot accelerate forwards. And so people, this motion never occurs. And so the thinking is that in order for motion to occur, that the forward force that the horse is exerting on the cart has to be bigger than the force that the cart is exerting on the horse. Okay, so in other words, Newton's third law is wrong, that the interactions are not equal and opposite in order for motion to happen. And this cannot be true. There's actually, there's a huge logic error Okay, according to Newton's third law, whatever force the horse pulls forward with on the cart, the cart has to be pulling backward with on the horse. They have to be equal. So how does motion occur? So let's go through this logic step by step. So the cart is attached to a horse. This is absolutely true. Okay. We cannot have the problem without the actual problem. Cart is attached to a horse. And we know that the horse does pull forward. Okay, No question about it, horse pulls forward. Okay, According to Newton's third law, the cart pulls back with the same force. Um, so these have to be equal. So the force on the horse by the cart has to be equal to the force on the cart by the horse. This must, must be true. It's never not true. It is always true. Always true. So it must be in this last paragraph is where we have the logic problem. So if the cart and the horse pull against each other with equal amounts of force, we already said that has to be true. This is Newton's third law. That means the forces are balanced and the cart cannot accelerate forward. So here's where we're making the mistake. Okay, here's where we're making the mistake. Okay. So the problem is, is that we haven't, this is, this is not the free body diagram. And those of you guys who are lazy with your free body diagrams and put them on the diagram, you're going to run into problems. Okay, so the free body diagram is wrong. When we are doing a free body diagram, we only look at one object. Okay, so if we want to look at the cart, whether or not the cart moves forward. Okay, so let's look at the free body diagram for the cart. So, cart. We know that there is the force on the cart due to the earth, okay? This is the force of gravity. We know that there is a normal force on the cart. I'm just gonna call it by the road. And these are equal to each other because of the motion, not because of thirds law. Newton's third law, but because of the motion. The cart is not moving in the vertical direction, and so the forces must be balanced. Okay, now we've got two forces left 
the thing to realize is that this is the force that goes on the free body diagram. So we've got the force on the cart by the horse, okay? This is not on the cart free body diagram because this is a force on the horse. And when you're doing a free body diagram, you only look at forces on an ob a single object. Free body diagram. Only um, kind of visualizes forces acting on an object. Any forces that object exerts on other objects does not belong on the free body diagram. Okay. So this is where you run into problems is that you want to put both of these forces on the same free body diagram and you can't. This force does not act on the cart. Okay, this force acts on the horse. Okay, so that's one part of doing the horse and the cart problem. The other part of doing the horse and the cart problem is that friction plays a role, but you have to be able to correctly identify which direction friction points. So there has to be friction between the ground and the horse in order for the horse to move. We want to know which way does the force of friction point between the ground and the horse. Before we go any farther, we want to start our free body diagram for the horse. Okay. So this is for, I'm going to move it over just a little bit. So free body diagram for the horse. We know that we've got the force of gravity on the horse by the earth. And we have normal force on the horse by the road. And we know that these are equal because the horse is not moving in the vertical direction. Nothing to do with Newton's third law. Horse is not moving in the vertical direction, and so the vertical forces have to be balanced. Now, if we think about the direction of the horse, we know that the horse is moving forward, and so intuitively we know that the force of friction, there's only one other thing acting on this horse, and that is the force due to friction. We intuitively know it has to move forward. So this is the force of friction on the earth, uh, sorry, on the horse by the road. Has to be forward, otherwise the horse is not moving forwards. Okay. So let's figure out how this happens. So the first thing I want you to do, stop the video, stand up on both feet, and you want to lift up your right leg and start to move it forward to take a step. Okay, so stand, you're gonna move forward with your right foot first. Which direction do you push your left leg, the one still on the ground, forwards or backwards? You actually have to push it backwards. And you can see it like in this walking person, this is a normal walk, okay? So first the leg is here relative to the body and then it's behind the body, okay? So the only way you can walk is if your back leg pushes backwards. So we want to think about it. Okay, so we want to think very carefully about this interface. So here's the road. And here is your foot. Okay, so if your foot, if this is like your foot moving backwards, then friction opposes that motion of the foot. Okay. So if you're pushing it back, that means that the force of friction has to be forward, okay? So in order to walk, you move your left leg backwards and the force of friction moving forwards is what allows your whole body to move forwards. 
So again, think about frictions pushing your foot forward or at least holding it steady in the forward direction. Okay, so there must be friction between the ground and the horse in order for the horse to move. Which way does it point? So in order for the horse to move forward, which direction does its hooves move? Okay, just like your foot, the hooves move backwards. Okay, and if the hooves move backwards, that means friction is moving the horse forwards. And so I'm just going to go up and copy. And then move it down here. Okay. Okay. So the force of friction is what moves the horse forward. There, there literally are no other forces acting on the horse. And so friction has to be what's moving him forwards. Okay, so which way does friction point? If a block is moving to the left, friction opposes the motion. So if the block is moving to the left, friction has to be pointing to the right. So the horse and cart are moving forward. The hoof is pushing to the left or backwards. Which way is friction pointing? Friction has to point forward. It has to oppose the motion of the hoof, and the hoof is to move backwards, so friction pushes forwards. Okay, so let's think about the tug of war problem. So we know that we have a cart, we have a horse. We know that there is a force between them. If you want to know what it is, I would probably call it a tension force. And then we have the earth. I'm going to split this with road. So we know that there is a force of gravity, so we're going to call this force of tension. We're going to call this force of gravity. And then there is also friction. So that is the schema. You might want to take a picture of it. OK, um, okay. so court and horse, horse problem. And this is actually any tug of war problem, because this is actually just a tug of war problem. Um, horse pulling forward, cart pulling backwards. Um, and so it's like any tug of war problem. Now, you are going to want to write these values down because you need to know them. The cart has a mass of 150 kilograms. Write it down. Horse has a mass of 440 kilograms. And the horse pulls the cart with 75 newtons of force. So in other words, when I have my force on the cart by the horse, this is equal to 75 newtons. Okay. okay, now if you think back to, um, let's see, where's a diagram? Okay, so if this is equal to 75 newtons, notice this, notice this, you should be able to come up with a numerical value for the force on the horse by the cart, okay? Because this is, those are a Newton third law pair. Okay. All right, so you're writing down these values. Um, I've given you a lot of information. So Using notability, you are going to draw and label a free body diagram for the horse. And it should be quantitative, which means that the length of the arrows is proportional to the size of the force. 
and you can calculate the values of all of the forces. I've pretty much worked this problem out for you. Okay. The only thing I didn't give you was, was some of the numbers. Okay. okay, next you want to draw and label a free body diagram for the court, uh, cart, sorry, and quantitative, just told you what that means. Include numbers that are known that, or that you calculate. Okay, what is a possible numeric value for how hard the cart pulls back on the horse? Justify your answer. Um, what is a possible numerical value for the forward force on the horse? Um, I actually think I meant friction force. Friction force on the horse, I'm pretty sure. And then there are actually multiple values, but it is um, like a quantitative, like greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. And so you should be able to come up with um, at least one value that could be true. And then what is a possible numerical value for the friction force on the cart? Again, there's a range of values. Um, Think about like what's the maximum or minimum possible value and then justify your answer. Work it out in notability.